Hi, and welcome back to The Thriftier Person. In order to understand UPSs, first we have to take a look at the basics of electricity so that we can properly size our UPS for our electrical needs. So, the first thing you need to know are the two most important numbers, in my opinion, on any electrical device are it uh, its voltage in America, that's between 100 and 120 volts, and how many amps that the, your electrical appliance draws. So what you do is you look either in your manual on the electrical device itself, uh, on the website before you buy it, and what you do is you take your volts, your volts could be anywhere from 100 to 120, that uh, pretty much falls within the U.S. standard. You take that number and you multiply it by the amps. You'll find the amps listed as either you know, a, a number or a decimal with numbers after it, and usually the letter, capital letter A, or maybe it says AMP or AMPS. There's no real standard, or nobody follows the standard of how exactly to mark it. Uh, but you'll find it in either one of those three combinations. So you take your voltage, uh, say it's 100, let's say your amperage or your amps are 5. 100 times 5 tells you that that item uses 500 watts on average, give or take a few, in one hour's period of time. So that's the number one thing you need to know. Now, you now know how to calculate basic wattage of any device when you have volts and you have amps. Now, I want you to remember the key word amps here because amps is what we're going to use, which in my opinion is the safest way to calculate how to purchase a UPS that will meet your needs and also, if you need, give you that extra time because you're not using the full capacity of the UPS so when you have a blackout, you're still able to run certain devices, which is what we did. We got a larger UPS than we needed for the phone and the wireless and the cable modem, so if we happen to be without power, Power for 12 hours, we still have the UPS applying the power, though there's no electricity coming from the utility company into the house. So we sized, sized it larger than we needed because, well, it's always nice to have phones. We have tablet and uh, other mobile devices which we can unplug from electricity and use because they have a full battery charge and still keep a track of what's going on with the weather, you know, keep in touch with relatives and friends during a power outage so we're not actually back in the days before UPSs when the power went out while you got out your oil lamp and your candles, and you just hope the utility company would turn on your, 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 your electricity faster than slower. So that's part one of this segment. They're all going to be combined together in one video, but I want to cover them piece by piece. So remember, voltage times amps tells you how many watts in an hour your appliance will be using. So let's move on to UPSs. When you're looking at a UPS, you can get them 300 VA, 500, 850, 900, 1100, 1200, and the numbers go up and up and up. So how do you know what you need? Take a look at the uh, appliances you're going to be plugging in. As an example, we have both the cable modem, the wireless router, and the telephone all plugged in to a UPS rated at a... Uh, uh, I think it's 700 VA, voltage amps. So, how long does that last? How do you figure it out? Well, you take each device that you plug in and you look at the amps and you add them up. And that will give you how many amps an hour that this is going to draw. So, for instance, adding up the cable, the wireless router, and the phone is 27 amps. Well, 27 amps... You should never use more than 60% of the rating, the VA rating or the voltage amp rating of a UPS. So if you had a 1,000 watt UPS and 60% of that would be 600 and you're only using 27 per hour, it's going to last a long time. And if you have a power failure for two days, most likely your UPS just with those three devices is going to last two days at full power. You know, uh, so that's how you size a UPS. You look at how many amps the item draws, all the items that you're going to plug in to the battery-powered section of your UPS. There's also a surge protection, but that doesn't have any battery backup. Power goes out, those items go down. Uh, so that's what you need to do. So you need to add up all of the amps on the back of your devices, and it shouldn't exceed more than 60% of whatever... UPS you're going to get, whatever it's rated at, 1,200 VA, 1,000 VA, 900 VA, try not to exceed 60%. So 
that's how you pretty much rate it, and I hope this is understandable. If it isn't, let me know, and I'll try clarifying again. Just list the points for me uh, in a message back to me to let me know what you need clarified, and I will redo this because, believe me, sometimes I can I have a lot of things going on in my head that I'm adding and calculating, and sometimes it doesn't always come out as clear as it would be for you as it is for me. So, thank you. Other things to consider about a UPS. There is AVR, automatic voltage regulation. Why would one want something like AVR where you can just get a standard UPS at a cheaper price without AVR? AVR is automatic voltage regulation. Voltage, as we know, in America is between 100 and 120 volts. So, if, for instance, you're having a brownout, well, your voltage is going to drop. If you have a surge, your voltage is going to increase over 120, which can happen. Uh, AVR is, uh, there's two types. There's the circuitry that's built in, which is way more expensive because, you know, it's on the second, watching what's going on. And then you have another one which is, uh, you know, it kind of calculates what's going on. It's still effective and efficient. I mean, you're not running, if you're running a massive data center, you'd want one that has instantaneous AVR analysis. If not, then just a standard AVR that you'd find from, say, uh, one of the uh, uh, UPSs that I'm going to have linked in this video, you'll find it directly underneath, uh, you know, would have it. Those are the ones that I recommend. And here's the reason why. If the voltage goes low, it will automatically stop the electricity from coming in from your outlet and rely only on the battery giving you that constant voltage. If the voltage is too high or too low, that's what it does. And that helps because you're not having a surge of massive electricity going into your appliance, which could cause burnout and or damage. And let's take something like a computer with a, hard, with a spinning hard drive. If the voltage drops too low, your hard drive isn't going to spin at 7200 revolutions per second, or known as 7200 RPM. It may slow down. It may cause a little magnetic head that reads to drag on your platter causing damage because there's not enough voltage coming through to keep it spinning at 7200 revolutions per second. So an AVR UPS, in my opinion, is an excellent additional feature to pay for because you're now getting double protection. When the power goes out, you've got the battery backup and you have the AVR making sure that your voltage falls within a certain range so it doesn't cause damage to your appliances by supplying too much voltage or not enough voltage or dirty electricity, which usually most likely happens when you're at the end of the electrical line, you know, you're at the, the end of the, they run it from the main circuit all the way down the end and you're at the last house on the electrical grid, so you get the dirtiest amount of energy. That's just how that goes. So that's something also to take into consideration. So we have learned voltage times amps tells you how many watts an hour. Divide that by 60 tells you how many watts a minute. If you want to know how long something, how much watts something uses in 30 minutes, then you would take that number multiplied by 30. That tells you how many watts in 30 minutes that appliance is going to use. You talked about sizing it. Should never have more than 60 percent. Your amp, your amps that you've calculated on, from the back, adding up all the devices that would be in the UPS, shouldn't exceed 60 percent of the total available amps that the UPS is supplying. That also gives you a buffer because if you're using 60% when the power goes out, you've got 40 more percent to use. That's great if you're having a massive blackout or if you may add more devices in the future because you have more than just three slots or four slots. You know, buy the number of slots, battery backup slots, uh, plug-in slots that you need. And if you have more, you can add more. But remember, never exceed 60%. Uh, of the total VA as you're adding more appliances if you choose to do so or at one point your VA is not going to start up because it's going to have too much of a draw or it's only going to last for a few seconds after the power goes out and then well what's the point of having it so size appro uh, appropriately based on uh, voltage amps uh, or amps themselves but not more than 60 percent and I'm repeating myself like a toucan but I can't stress it enough um, I will have links on the bottom. I happen to like a few different UPSs and we use them. We use them on all of our computers with the AVR and we also use them on our phone cable and router as well. So when the power goes down, we still have connectivity on certain things. Though you can't buy a UPS at this current time to run your furnace when the electricity isn't running. There are alternate methods for that as well. All right, so that's how you do it. And believe me, when your computer is in a sleep mode, you'll notice there's a little button you can push and it will tell you how 
many kilowatts it's using. When a computer is in sleep mode, a modern computer is in sleep mode, it uses uh, in the thousands of a, of a watt. So uh, very energy efficient and you can sit there and watch and it will tell you when you push this button it will show you different things like how many watts per hour it's using on average. Uh, what uh, if you're bad if it was to go electricity were you to lose electricity how many hours or how many minutes you would have before your battery actually died. Uh, there are many great features to a UPS and believe me do you want to replace your computer which may cost you thousands of dollars or maybe a 73 or 129 dollar UPS that protected your equipment, but uh, it took the hit and died. So that's the question. Which do you want to do? Replace the UPS or replace equipment and all of everything on your hard drive is gone, your computer is gone, your display is gone. So the question is up to you. Do you want to rely on the electric company to give you nice clean energy at the correct voltage all the time or do you want a UPS in the middle to make sure that what you want and what you get are exactly the same? All right. I hope that was clear and concise. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. Uh, and as always, you can look it up, how to calculate watts and how to size a UPS. You can find those on any website. And I will have links in the bottom, as I said, for the UPSs that I use because I find them to be rather reliable. Thank you so much and have a great day.